Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. This week is not the most exciting week in food that we have ever had, but the most important thing, we were fed, it was quick and easy, and that's what matters the most. So if you want some inspiration for nights that you maybe feel like you don't have a lot of time to spend in the kitchen, stay tuned. All right, remember when I said we'd been eating a lot of zucchini and yellow squash? Well, we are still at it and probably no end in sight. As long as there is fresh garden zucchini, having it fried is one of our very favorite ways to have it, albeit maybe not the healthiest, um, but it definitely is our favorite. We haven't grown a garden since 2020. We grew a garden in 2020. Um, and we did not grow one in 2021 or this year, so I have some delicious zucchini from our son Gunner and his wife Abigail. They have a wonderful garden. And so I was talking about in last week's video how you turn your zucchini like this when you are chopping it um, or actually slicing it. You just kind of rotate it and cut these smaller pieces and I'm just doing that right over top of the bowl into the flour just some self-rising flour and I'm just gonna toss that for a light coat it just makes it kind of um, quicker and easier to fry up because you aren't frying single individual slices rounds of zucchini you can toss it in there into your skillet and just use your um, spatula or egg turner and just kind of toss it all around it just makes it go much quicker especially if you're wanting to fry up a larger amount so that's what they look like after they've been all cut up like I said I'm going to toss them in this flour here and um, just you want to remove as much of the flour as you can before you get it into your frying pan you can fry it in um, butter, olive oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, coconut oil, whatever oil you want to fry it in and um, fries up quick and so delicious. I'm frying this up in two batches. There's batch one and here it is when it's all finished up. Batch two on top. We have a nice plate of fried zucchini and then for this day, it was just a busy day, so I started the morning with the crock pot. I put a big chuck roast in there, and um, I was home. It was a busy day, but I was home. So about partway through the cook time, I put in some gold potatoes and some carrots. I very simply seasoned the pot roast um, with just garlic, salt, and pepper, I think, that day. Um, did not put any gravy or anything special. Just a very plain and simple, hearty meal. Uh, beef and lots of veggies. It was delicious. We hadn't had a roast in quite some time, so this hit the spot. Now moving on to another night's dinner. We hadn't had any pork chops in a while, and so I pulled out this uh, pork loin roast out of the freezer, and I just cut the end off where it kind of gets a little smaller, and I want chop sizes about like this. So Basically, it's a boneless pork chop, so I'm just going to go through this pork tenderloin and get this all sliced up. All right, now it's time to move on to the seasoning. I'm just going to lightly use the uh, Lowry seasoning salt. I don't want that a real heavy coating on there, and I'm going to use some black pepper and some garlic powder. I sliced up a few more of the, these than what we needed for just tonight's dinner because these are great to have as lunches or breakfast. And as you will see in the upcoming clips, we are having breakfast for dinner tonight. I don't know if you've ever had a pork chop along with your breakfast, but it is delicious. And then the drippings make such a very flavorful gravy to go over your biscuits. So that is what we are having tonight. So I went ahead and just made a few extra so these would be in the refrigerator and ready to eat whenever we want them. All right, so I just have a light coating of flour on these and in my pan I've probably got some olive oil or actually it could be some bacon grease. I like to keep my leftover bacon fat. When I fry bacon, it makes a wonderful way to fry things up. Um, I can't remember which one I've used, but um, you just want to cook these till the internal temperature of pork. I can't remember off the top of my head what that is, um, but I'll put it on the screen. I want just these uh, light golden brown, and 
they are just going to be perfect. And then I always talk about putting a little bit of water at the end of my cook time and putting on the lid. And it just kind of steams them and it really tenderizes them, keeps them really moist. And that is a real key, at least in my opinion. So I um, have been making pork chops for a long, long time. So I just eyeball these until I think they look about right for me. And I'm just taking them out of the pan here and look how beautifully golden brown they are. Going to be so, so good. And then all those drippings in the pan is going to make the perfect gravy. All right, based on the amount of drippings and liquid that I have here in this pan, I'm probably gonna add about three tablespoons of flour, some salt and pepper. I'm just gonna let that cook in that fat and grease until it just kind of you know cooks a little bit and that starts getting pasty. And then I'm gonna pour in my milk. This time around, I'm using 2%. I love using canned evaporated milk to make gravy. It gives it such a rich flavor. But this time, it's just good old 2% um, milk. And so I just stir that until these little pieces of flour start breaking down and thickening up the gravy. And then I'm just gonna fry up some eggs. And we've got a great breakfast for dinner, only with a little bit of a different kind of meat with these delicious pork chops. So if you've never tried pork chops or pork tenderloin with breakfast, give it a try. I'm telling you the gravy really benefits in flavor. All right, a few videos back, I made copycat Big Macs and they were so delicious. So I still have some of that sauce and I decided to make Big Mac sliders. So I just had this two pound roll of frozen ground beef and I decided to just slice it while it was a little bit frozen and it made the perfect little sizes to go on the slider buns. I just thought that was such a great trick. And so on here, I have some of the dehydrated onions and I also put just a little bit of Worcestershire sauce in the pan while I was frying these up and just a sprinkle of this Chop House steak seasoning. These were very, very flavorful and good. And then after they were done, I just took a piece of cheese and kind of split it a couple of ways because I didn't want to lose a bunch of cheese over the sides because these were smaller. So I split up my cheese like that. And then look here, I have the most fabulous little Big Mac sliders. I use the sauce, I use the shredded lettuce and the restaurant style pickles. And then on the top, just buttered the buns and sprinkled on some sesame seeds. I was in a little bit of a hurry because this was at a church fellowship meal, so I was trying to get these done quickly. And I just stuck them in the oven for literally, oh, I don't know, two minutes under the broiler. They were so delicious. Another night for dinner, we had garlic parmesan chicken wings. I had whole wings. I had gotten a really good deal on those. I just clipped the tip off, and then, of course, with my came, same kitchen shears, I just split these from the drum from the flat and so in my bowl here I just followed the directions on that little seasoning envelope I think it was maybe olive oil in the seasoning let that marinate and I just did them in my air fryer and you can see here they turned out such a beautiful golden brown I um, used my meat thermometer to make sure they were done all the way I didn't want to overcook them and got them just right and so I just left them plain like this and then set out a few sauces here and James and I both were in the mood for the buffalo and I didn't even like completely coat mine. I just kind of drizzled a little bit here and there. And then I just served with some french fries on the side. It was a very delicious, kind of a quick and easy meal, kind of a restaurant style meal. We really enjoyed this. And then moving into another night's dinner, I kind of went from my freezer tonight and did some frozen things that I had. So these cod fillets and this battered halibut. Both of these are from Trader Joe's. I just did these in my air fryer. The um, smaller pieces and more of the batter style is the halibut and then more of the crumbly texture um, breading is the cod fillets. So I just did those in my air fryer like I said. I just did a box of spiral craft macaroni and cheese on the side. It was just a very easy meal. Did some french fries again in the oven. I had just used part of those fries earlier in the week um, to go with the wings. And so this was really, really good. Again, kind of felt like we were having some seafood out somewhere. So 
it's nice to have some convenient style foods like this in the freezer to where you've got a meal, um, but it was kind of already done for you, some of it, so it doesn't require so much time spent in the kitchen. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you did get some inspiration. If you're new around here, I'd love to have you. If you want to hit that subscribe button, you'll know that every time I'm in the kitchen, um, you can be here too. If you enjoyed this, give it a big thumbs up, and I'll see you the next time. Good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Mm -hmm.